Well, what is going on, Notre Dame fans? Mike Singer and Tim Hyde live on a Wednesday. It is December 27th, um, and we are uh, live to you right at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Hope you all are doing well. Hope you had a Merry Christmas um, and have a great um, upcoming um, New Year. Um, and, uh, yeah, just hoping that you're having a very happy holiday season. And, of course, in the midst of this holiday season is a Notre Dame Bowl game, Sun Bowl, December 29th, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern time. That's a CBS game, I believe. Um, so uh, looking forward to that game, Tim. I know uh, we're, we're both kind of f- feeling it right now. We're both a little exhausted uh, just from, from the holiday season. But uh, oh, yeah. hanging in there, my friend. Oh, yeah. I mean, seriously, this is um, – I know, hey, to everyone chatting with us tonight, watching, thank you a ton. Um, I told you this earlier, and uh, which it's like, my God, today is Wednesday. Holy moly. You know, that Christmas on Monday messes up the whole week. But, uh, no, I'm excited. I'm excited to talk about this game. I'm excited for the game. I'm excited to get home, Mike, lay on the couch. As I told you, you got to watch a little USC, Louisville. I have no idea who I want to win that game. I just want to – Hopefully it's a good fourth quarter game. I'm going to be going back and forth watching a and I'm actually uh, curious to see who's playing for a and that's sure. going to be on the team next year because they have had – I mean, people talk about the Notre Dame opt-outs. I know Oregon State's had a handful. Mike, there are some teams in like 20. 20 there's, there's some programs of 20-something players. So you better recruit. I know we talk about portal. We talk about all these things. But as Marcus Freeman even harped on on signing day, it's still about recruiting. It's still about high school games. And that's really what these bowl games are turning into is who's recruiting at an elite level and who's got the guys ready to go on to the next season if you're not in the playoffs. So it's uh, it's wild. So but but I'm looking forward to Friday. Yeah, Terry says, uh, hit the like for the crew, folks. Please do that. Hit the thumbs up on this video if you're watching on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel if you are new here. Um, and, of course, blueandgold.com is your home for all things Notre Dame um, athletics. You can um, join our Blue and Gold family with this special offer. Use the promo code UND1. Uh, if you're a new subscriber, that'll get you two months of access for just a buck. So uh, head to blueandgold.com and check that out. I have a couple of sort of related notes, Tim. Uh, On Monday, I am going to San Antonio for the All-American Bowl. We'll be there all week. Really looking forward to that. Can you believe we're starting to see lots of opt-outs for the postseason All-American Bowl? That thing is starting to die down a little bit. I mean, there is seriously players who have been committed to the game for a long time opting out. Um I just got a text today. One of the top quarterbacks in the game is not expected to play. Another player is not expected to play is Gerby Lambert. Not an opt-out. It's an injury. Uh, he had a, a minor, I believe it was a knee thing. Um, so really just didn't want to, it was, it was more precautionary, which makes absolute sense. Um, but yeah, the, the opt-outs things. And how about this, Tim? How about Notre Dame re-signing with Under Armour, right? Do you know how many Notre Dame players are in the Under Armour All America game in Orlando? <laughs> yes. Mike, Mike, I, I forgot all about that game. I mean, that's been an ESPN game. That, it's almost like 90% of that uh, that game over the years has just turned into SEC, ACC signees, so to speak. But uh, oh, there's got to be zero, I'm assuming, right? Zero, Tim. Zero. Yes. It's, yeah, it's like an ESPN game, but still the Under Armour All America game. Yeah. You think they would have. Notre Dame guys in there, but uh, so you got the Under Armour game, Notre Dame ties, the the game on NBC. You know they always get Notre Dame guys in there, but only four playing in that this year with with Gerby out, which I think it was like ten last year and like twelve the year before. Um, so kind of wild to me, like Micah Gilbert, Aeneas Williams, Tay Johnson, some of these high profile Notre Dame signees not invited to uh, cool. into the All Star games. It's fascinating. Yeah, Gilbert. I mean, they're redoing the Army one. Yeah, that so he played like in the Army weird, game. But but that know. was like some weird streaming service, which I had no idea. I'm just reading about that on the message board. I think someone had posted uh, last week, and I was like, oh, my God, I forgot about that. So re- real quick on the opt-outs. Um, yeah, on the All-Star game, I played it, and I was in the All-Los Angeles County game a couple years ago when I, when couple. I played. A, yeah, couple. a couple years ago. 
a couple of years ago and uh yeah, obviously it was an awesome honor to get called out name all that good stuff run out in front of the crowd and um but man mike there's you know probably a reason why this may fade away is almost a half of everyone that signs now is an early enrollee so it's like do you you know i you know, and it also goes back to 99% of these freshmen are they even going to play as freshmen, right? So it's odd. Um, it, I've never been a big fan of uh, the recruiting services even using as part of the recruiting because it's new coaches, new scheme. I know a few uh, SoCal coaches that have coached in it, and it's just a makeshift. Yeah, it's. I think it – But it's going to drift away, I think, pretty soon. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. Yeah, to your point about the you you don't like the the services using it for rankings. I I've never got the sense that the game is a big deal. It's much more the practices because you can see, like Tim, a one on one receiver DB. I mean, that's got nothing to do with scheme. That is all man versus man there. Um, but yeah, but yeah some, your, your yeah, point. You, I hear you. I hear yeah, you. and uh, I, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing kind of the fallout to the these postseason All Star games because. I mean, I've been, this will be my third straight year going to San Antonio one. I've been going to the um, Under Armour one. Um, I'm not. I haven't the past couple of years, but you know, throughout the the 2010s, I, I I don't know. I've been to five or six of the, you know during the week. I think even a couple of times I, I I went to Under Armour for a couple of days, then flew up to San Antonio. So they're cool, but it's going to be interesting to see if that's kind of a side effect. Everyone's opting out these days. You remember like Christian McCaffrey was that first big opt out where at least that I remember. Um, and that then it just started to start. It was obviously the Jalen Smith injuries, all these, you know, high pressure. I'm thinking about it, but, uh, you know, before we get on our topics and all the people listening, uh, probably, I mean, they don't even do, I I remember when it was a huge, like the opening, they don't even do the, when do they get rid of that? I mean, boom, I totally forgot about that. That used to yeah. be a massive event. How many Notre Dame recruits, how many offers are going to be there? I used to read about and check in on the – it's funny, Mike. I've been down in the basement the last couple of days cleaning out uh, my football office and got the whole stack of blue and golds, and I came across one of the uh, the the one from 2008. There's like 15 Notre Dame guys on the cover of the, of the blue and gold illustrated back from the army day back in the heyday. So yeah, it stinks how some of these have drifted away, but a lot of the competitions have drifted away as well. It's like, all there is now is the elite 11. Cause yeah. you don't know about, you know, nothing, you know, all, everyone's got their private seven on seven teams and yeah. all these travel teams. That's what it's morphed into as the opening and these other big events have, have just fallen away. Yeah. The, the opening went away. I think post COVID for whatever reason that just didn't start up. There's still the elite 11 camps. Like, I mean, yeah. I went to my first rivals camp when I was 19 years old, I was basically the recruits age when I started at rivals. And that was a huge deal. That's kind of faded away there. There's a saturation with all of these kind of off season deals, but also I think it's just kind of lost its luster. Um, you don't need all the exposure anymore from those camps because yeah, you know, you're you're just it's just so much easier to pop off. A side note before we dive into today's show, Tim. Uh okay. Steven said, Mike, let me know if you're free to hang out um at the Esquire Tyron. Um so when I uh I got invited by the Notre Dame Club of San Antonio when I was there last year, me and a few other Notre Dame reporters, which was really cool. And a side note, you know, I've been living in Atlanta for a few years covering Notre Dame football recruiting. Notre Dame Club of Atlanta, what the hell are you doing? Well, I mean, what are you doing? We're, I've emailed them twice because I'm on their email list and they had another Notre Dame reporter, you know, do a Zoom call with them. I'm thinking to myself, I'm I'm down the street. What the hell are you doing? So Notre Dame Club of Atlanta, what are you doing? All right. Anyways, um, we did a video, Tim, that popped off on Friday. Got like 20,000 views, which is not bad for us, Mr. Hyde. We'll take that. Especially that was like December. December. Yeah, especially the end of December, you know, yes. It was Mike Denbrock, yeah. um, the news breaking that he's becoming Notre Dame's offensive coordinator. And then the news became official, uh, what, 1 o'clock or so Eastern time. Notre Dame tweeted it out, welcome back to Notre Dame, Coach Denbrock. And there is that old gray hair factor that you love to see. And uh, part of Freeman's quote, 
on Denbrock was Mike is an elite coach across the board. He is a great leader, recruiter, and developer. But what I love most is his competitive spirit. Some that competitive spirit's uh, something that Freeman loves to talk about. So I'm sure Tim, as you've been in the basement for a couple days, you know, just reading, you know, blue and gold. You probably read a decade's worth of blue and gold illustrated magazines, and you know, watched film from the some 2005 game or you know something, whatever you do, Tim. So as you've been able to reflect some on this Denbrock hire, what are you thinking right now? It's, I mean, it's exciting. It's um, it's funny because, you know, the greatest invention outside of um, what's that sourdough bread, I guess. But it's like, what is is uh, YouTube? I mean, you go on Mr. YouTube and you find out whatever you want. You type in Mike Denbrock, found a ton of old videos from 1415, which speaking of calling out, Mike, when is the Notre Dame media team? going to go back to what they used to do. I mean, they used to be training camp. We used to get videos, unbelievable film, coaches interviews back during those early Kelly days and everything changed. So they need to go back and rewatch some of the Jack Nolan interviews. And I uh, saw a bunch of those with uh, Mike Denbrock, but uh, no, it, 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 it's exciting because of people are excited still about, you know, Freeman, you know, some ups and downs here and there in the first two years. But going back to what I said last year, it's almost like a little mini reboot. And he's got an experienced, you know, head coach on the D. He got this veteran on the offense that's been around. He's been in, and he's going to be what? It's going to be his 10th year, 11th year when you combine all the years, you know, with Notre Dame, which is unbelievable. Like I mentioned last week, great recruiter, actually. Believe it or not, Mike, I looked into some old blue and golds, and, and there's some bunch of California guys. You always see Denbrock sprinkled in there uh, back in the, back in his uh, tenure and whatnot. So, but it's exciting. And just, just, you know what? And I started thinking about, and w- one of the things I said in that video, which, you know, rings true to me is, is following what he's done from 17 to 20, you know, 23, what he did at Notre Dame and things of that nature. That's great. But he was on his own for, for these years. And I went back and looked at Cincinnati numbers. Cause I'm like, okay, w- where were they? Well, holy moly. He took over an offense that was 99th the year before he got there. He went to 101 after his first year. He had the 101st ranked offense after his first year at Cincinnati. Obviously, they're rebuilding all those good things. His last year, Mike, they finished 13th. So you got a team, you got a a coach. Same with Marcus Freeman, obviously, in the defense, that whole building. People always talk about, oh, why is Freeman hiring his buddies? That's why. You got all these Cincinnati guys that have been there, were at rock bottom, took them to the playoffs. And when you just look at Mike Denbrock, you go from 101 to 13. You know, and as you know in recruiting, he's not out there getting the cream of the crop out of Ohio. They're getting all those middle-of-the-road guys, those guys you got to develop, scheme around, things of that nature. So that was something that was really exciting. And, um, and just a real quick little stat. This is something I thought about today uh, sitting at home. Is obviously Notre Dame with Freeman and Golden the last two years. They've been unbelievable on pa- past defense. Notre Dame's only given up five 290-yard games passing in, in the last three years. Only five. I mean, the majority of teams aren't even getting 200. And one of those five is, is Desmond Ritter in 2001. So I found that interesting. Just a few numbers out there. But overall, Denbrook's got experience. And he's proven that, obviously, in his two years at LSU. I need a yes or no answer from you on this one because I have another question for you. When you were coaching in Southern California, did Denbrock ever like come to your school to meet with oh, yeah. you? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. I've, I've met him a handful of times. Yes. Yes or no. Okay. Yes. Now, now, with that in mind, when you, you you've talked to me, right? I wasn't covering a Notre Dame when he was here last. So you've been telling me about how good of a West Coast recruiter he is, and I'm looking. He's from Homer, Michigan. Let's look at his coaching career. Grand Valley State, Michigan State, Illinois. I mean, Stanford for a year, Washington for a few years. But otherwise, it's it's like, what, 75 80% Midwest. Um, curious, like, thoughts on why he's had so much success as a West Coast recruiter? Maybe – that time with Washington in the year in Stanford, you know, he really built some strong connections out there. But it just seems interesting that, you know, that he's connected so well, you know, recruiting out there. 
No, exa- exactly. I mean, same thing with, you know, another great one is guys will know is obviously Brian Polian, the same thing, Polian, you know, Midwestern guy, but he's for whatever reason, a West coast Hawaii guy and Denbrock's just, you know, sometimes that's just who you are in recruiting, you know, and he did that a lot in his first stint with Willingham. And then the early Kelly years, he was, he was the California guy. And uh, we always laugh about Fresno, obviously on the board because Notre Dame struck out a ton. Uh, with Fresno guys, but Denbrock's the one that was in there building those relationships. But uh, and the same thing all throughout Southern California. It's number one. He's very personable. He's easy to get along with. Easy to talk with. There's some coaches. Hey, who do you got? Give you a high five and leave. They got 16 other trips to, to do. Denbrock will literally sit down and talk football with you for an hour. I don't have to go there till there. And he'll sit around and chat. I think that's just his personality. Uh, in recruiting in general, the few times I've been around him. But uh, no, it's a great question, Mike, because he's from the middle of nowhere, Michigan. He's got all these other stops. And who would have thought some, you know, assistant at Grand Valley State has connections all throughout California. But I think that's just him as a person, as a type of coach he is. Okay. And the communicator he is is outstanding. He's had great success. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. We're going to hear from our sponsors, the Rogue Shop, the husband and wife outfit, Mr. Rogue. Um, and his wife, Shar, are craft cannabis farmers who specialize in small batch, sustainable plant medicine, a true holistic type of small business. That that opened there. That was all by memory. Your boy's been reading this ad for a while, folks. Um, Mr. Rogue and Shar farm and grow everything themselves. They do everything by hand. Check them out over at rogueshop.com. That's R-O-G-U-E shop.com. They sell everything from CBD, THC, edibles, tinctures, smokables, bath salts, paint creams, topicals, vapes, candles, soaps, and more. Hop on the website in the bottom left corner of the screen. Um, there is a chat function where you can hop on and talk to Shar and Mr. Rogue, and they will answer any questions that you have. So check it out, rogueshop.com. If you have issues sleeping, chronic pain, and or have anxiety, stress issues, use the promo code blue and gold. Um, that is just one word. Uh, pop that in there and get 10% off your order over at Rogue Shop. So please do check that out over at uh, rogueshop.com if you are interested. Um, all right, Mr. Hyde, we wanted to next go to – actually, Tim, did we, did we get into discussing um, Denbrock and kind of the – the last two quarterbacks you work with, you know, we, you know, it's kind of everything he touches turns yeah. to gold right now. Um, I don't know if you read my expert reaction piece. I talked to a few guys that on three, I believe I had you in there as well, Tim, uh, from the video we did, but Charles power really d- dove into that. Everyone's favorite quarterback guru at on three. Um, you know, he talked about, you know, Hey, Ritter and Daniels, he had more time to develop those guys. Leonard, it's, it's you know it, it's just the one season, so I am interested to kind of see what you think about how Leonard and and Denbrock might fit. Well, I think they're going to fit outstanding. I mean, you just going back to that 17, 2017, the twenty three window that Denbrock's had, and yeah, you got Desmond Ritter, and then you got you know Mr. Daniels, the Heisman winner, but Ritter was also in the top ten in Heisman, so. You look at the last two quarterbacks he's had, they've been top 10 Heisman finalists. You know, obviously you have a winner. I found that, I found that interesting. No, I mean, Notre Dame's only had, what, two, uh, two quarterbacks. Well, t- Tony Rice is a runner, but two passing quarterbacks in Brady Quinn and Ian Book with top 10 votes since Tim Brown last one. I found that fascinating. It's been so long. Going back to that Notre Dame fan base starving for offense for an elite quarterback. But, um, I think he's going to do outstanding because let's remember they're getting Riley Leonard, right? If Howard Cross, Mike, if Howard Cross doesn't land on his ankle and he's beat up and high ankle sprain, is he gone? Does he have a 22 and a 23 season back to back type of seasons in a way that, boom, he's going to go. I'll be a second round pick, a third round pick. I'll go develop. Heck, Sam Howell was that. He's not, I mean, Sam Howell's outstanding, but Desmond Reuters played. You got so many quarterbacks in the NFL. I think watching the games this weekend, 50, someone could quote me on this, but 48 or 52 starting uh, quarterbacks have started in the NFL this year. It's got to be in the 50s. That's insane how many quarterbacks have played this year, started a game. So I'm sure there's a team out there that take Riley Leonard in a heartbeat. So 
they're getting a they're getting a pretty good football player, going to be re uh, ready to roll. I'm sure Denbrock's got an unbelievable system for the athlete, and all you have to do is go back and watch some of the film. I mean, Daniels, and you're, and you're right. You know your point real quick. Let me get to that. Is he had two years with Daniels, but Daniels was horrible when he came to LSU. Horrible. 10 touchdowns, 10 picks. And then he ends up this year, 40 touchdowns, four picks, just in quick two years. So it's going to speed up the process. But the type of athlete right, Riley Leonard is, I think he's going to excel in that because he's already a high echelon athlete potential. So hopefully um, he thrives on that thing and gets ready to roll. John mentions uh, Manti. Yeah, so talk about Heisman winner or, or Heisman finals on offense. Yeah. Yeah, quarterback. Yeah. quarterback. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Manti, uh, of course, over on defense did that a, a little over a decade ago. Forgot to pop this up. Uh, Chef Terry Lee Thomas Sr. says, Hey guys, I believe CJ will start against Texas AM, and unfortunately, Angeli will transfer. Um, I've I don't know. We'll see if you go one for two there. I don't think you're gonna get both of those things correct. We'll see if you go one for two. Uh, but uh, Mr. Chef Terry Lee Thomas Sr., that name is that mouthful. I really appreciate your $10 super chat, my friend. I uh, hope you are well. Uh, so let's get into the Sun Bowl depth chart for Notre Dame. This team's going to look a lot, hell of a lot different than, um, you know, the team that we saw against Stanford. Quarterback, we got uh, Steve Angeli uh, backed up by Kenny Minchie. No CJ Carr in the game, folks. He's practicing with the team due to some weird NCAA rule that I cannot believe exists, uh, but he is only allowed to practice and not play in the game. Uh, running back, you got Jeremiah Love and Jadarian Price at the top, uh, probably in that order as well. And then uh, Jabran Payne and uh, Devin Ford will probably see a little bit as well. Starting receivers, uh, you got Jaden Thomas, uh, Jaden Greathouse, there's your wide guys, and then uh, Jordan Faison in the slots. We'll also see Dion Colsey, Matt Salerno, and K.K. Smith. There's your six healthy wide receivers in the game. Really good to see K.K. Smith back and Dion Colsey. Now, um, the bowl game does not count towards your you know, ability to redshirt. So Colsey, I think, has played in four games. So he can still play in this game and keep his richer, which is great. Three healthy tight ends in the game. Eli Raritan, Cooper Flanagan, and Davis Sherwood. Really looking forward to seeing what Eli Raritan can do. And then quickly, Tim, um, the offensive line. No real surprises here from left to right. Charles Jagasaw, Pat Coogan, Ashton Craig, Billy Shrouth. And uh, it does look like Tosh Baker is going to start at right tackle over Emil Wagner. So any surprises here on the offensive side of the ball? Any takeaways on looking at this, Tim? Uh, no, I mean, there's no surprises. It's, it's a, it's a good, it's a good group of running backs. That's uh, I mean, Estime's obviously had a heck of a year. All American second team consensus, all American, <laughs> but we all love some of those running backs. And that's, what's cool about, you know, a game like this, I guess, the way the system is nowadays where it's, you know, 15 practices and you get your spring game, which is the bowl game now. But it's also like we keep mentioning the how, how you recruit. Because, yeah, I mean, let's be honest. This is a, a kickoff for 2024. The majority of – I mean, look at all these guys you've just listed on offense. They're all coming back. So none of these – I mean, these this is the 2024 offense outside of, you know, the quarterback. But if – Riley Leonard's belt buckle breaks. Who's going to be the quarterback? Vangeli goes out, throws for 275, a couple touchdowns, moves the offense up and down, puts up 28, 31 points. Boom. You know you could count on him next year. So, you know, this is a big game, I think, for that. But as far as depth chart, the biggie is is um, is the right tackle. The fact that Tosh Baker beat out Emil Wagner. It's funny you mentioned Phil, Mike, because you know I do like film. I actually laid on the couch last night and rewatched. Just the offense, the 2021 Purdue game. Of course you do. I'm, I'm literally, I was going to send you and Goolsby a tech shot. And I was like, oh, man, they'll, they'll just laugh at me. I did. I rewatched Tosh Bar Baker's first start. and um, But he went against the Carl Loftus guy, the guy who's yeah. free from Purdue and held his own all game long. Just, he's so, I mean, as you know, I mean, you've met Tosh. He's huge. He's yeah. a mountain of a man. He doesn't have the greatest feet and all, but if he gets his hands on you, he's going to ride you out. And he did that a ton in that Purdue game. So 
if he gets his huge frame out there on the edge, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to him having a good game. And obviously, Big Charles on the left side is just awesome. I listened to Gino Gudulli's press conference today, and one reporter asked him about Charles and just the way he lit up. Like he said, the thing he's like, he's large and he's got a big brain and picks everything up so quick. So that was really cool that they um, they think that highly of him to start him as a true freshman. So that's that's really exciting. But overall, depth chart, nothing surprising other than really excited to see some of these guys. I mean, you go all those wide receivers. Hopefully, it sounds like they're all healthy, no hamstrings. And then you get a K.K. Smith who we haven't seen all season. We really haven't seen Colsey, it feels like, since Navy. Yeah. And it's East, so it's been a long time. So it'll be nice to get this good group out there. And obviously the, the headliner is really Stephen Jelly, which is exciting to see what he's going to do in this football game. I still push back on the, like, this is the 2024 offense. Like, it's going to be a lot of the same names, but you develop in an off season and then Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, you and you bring in re- new receivers. I mean, they're going to bring in. They already got two committed, and they're, they're probably going to get a third. I'm really interested to see if they go get a portal tackle. I don't know if they need one, Tim. If they well, we'll, if they love we'll Jackson like talk. I know they do, yeah. Then do you, I guess it's really how much you believe in Tosh Baker slash Emil yes. Wagner for for right That's... tackle, and I guess and if how comfortable they are for Jackson. I hope that this Sun Bowl is a little bit of a tryout for that. You know, because Angeli did not get that. Angeli did not get that at the quarterback spot. They feel like they know what they have. And Angeli, yeah. uh, if they were maybe get, uh, unsure, they would have waited. But you can't really do that in the quarterback transfer no. portal market, right? You do kind of have to move early. But anyways, offensive tackle. Um, we'll, the tackle, we'll yeah. Yeah, you know, when I say it is the 20, it's it's the bodies, the personnel. These guys are going to make it, make up. The playing time. Sure, they got a couple portal wide receivers, but you know, Collins is a another Colsey, another Jaden Thomas type guy. He's not a he's not a blazer and whatnot. Highly competitive kid who's played really good football. At Clemson yeah. Mitchell, he's coming from FIU. His film looks electric and things of that nature. But it's Florida International the now fighting against A and M press coverage. A different world. So, and Great House is going to play. We know Faison's going to play a ton. You know, obviously. Uh, K.K. Smith, who they're raving about, the new freshmen coming in. In the past, have never been – I mean, the freshmen had to play this year because they had to play. There's no other wide receivers. So I'm sure one or two of this group is going to have to play again next year because of depth chart. But yeah. the offensive line is the most exciting thing, Mike, because you're right. If Baker goes out there and, and Charles has a good game on the left side, you're set because the interior is ready to roll. Rocco Very comes good. back. Add them and gives them more depth. So the interior is set. Craig is an outstanding football player. You know, Pat Coogan has started every single game this year. So, and then obviously you got Billy Shroud going into his second straight start, and he had a heck of a game against uh, Stanford at the end of the season. So this O line can solidify itself moving into spring, and that's what's yeah. nice. On Friday, I wrote an article like my superlatives for the 2024 class. There's just kind of a fun article I put together. For the 2022 class, because I went back and, and read that one, that's Proto's article, I, I put Ashton Craig as my hidden gem because six months before he signed with Notre Dame, he had like just a couple Power 5 offers, then he kind of blows up in the summer going into senior season. And Ashton Craig, we saw him at the All-American Bowl, kind of struggled, and he has really come along. Ashton Craig, good-looking offensive lineman. I think he's going to be – uh three-year starter you know it's two three-year starter for notre dame he's a he's an impressive player we're gonna go to the defensive side of the ball tim i don't feel like this one is there's not a ton to break down here but jordan patelho uh we're gonna see bubakar treori talk about the the whole uh, red shirt deal he can play in this game he's played four games but he can play in this one not burn a red shirt junior to a mock at viper you know, three technique defensive tackle. You'll have Mills, Anya, Heinish, nose tackle, cross, Rubio, as well as Heinish. So, I mean, really not any changes here. Uh, strong side end, same stuff. JJB, Burnham, Triori. I mean, the, the, Will Linebacker, Kaiser, Mike Linebacker, Bertrand. No Leah foul in this game. We'll see, we'll see more Jalen Sneed. And then corner. 
you know, no Cam Hart. We'll see more Jaden Mickey and Christian Gray as expected. And then uh, Notre Dame will also have Ben Morrison, Clarence Lewis, and Chance Tucker. And then safety, DJ Brown, Xavier Watts, no Ramon Henderson. But, yeah, n- n- nothing – this all looked right. No, I mean, just – yeah, I mean, a couple – obviously Harper opting out, but Clarence Lewis is a vet. I mean, Clarence Lewis was a starting freshman corner against Alabama. So – I think him playing in the Sun Bowl, he'll he'll rise up and you know playing. He's the guy started tons of games, so he's a you know piece of cake to move in there at nickel. Mickey had an unbelievable end of the season when he got in there uh, in games and highly competitive football player. Christian Gray, we all think is the next Notre Dame All American to replace you know Morrison when he leaves after a year. Or so expecting him, and then going back to the press conference, I was listening to Al Goldman's in. I kind of like how he, he talked about Josh Burnham. Sounds like they're going to keep, which I thought going all the way back to the Navy game and then uh, the Tennessee game, he played with his hand in the ground all year long. So they're going to make him a strong side defensive end, which I like. They just think he's so big, he's going to just keep growing. So I found that exciting. And then in their base, they're actually going to have Kaiser play the Rover, and then Sneed will be the Will. And then when they go to Nickel, Kaiser and Sneed will rotate it. The will I found that interesting. So, and then just lastly on D is um, I hope I hope we get to see Bowen a little bit, rotate a little bit depending on how the game goes. JD is obviously the ultimate veteran play caller, all those things. So hopefully Bowen gets in there, gets his feet wet, and gets some of that experience before they head into the winter conditioning when uh you know Asa from St. John Bosco shows yeah. up, and that's going to be a war at Mike Backer, the competition. Tim. How I'm just trying to think here. How many of these guys have no eligibility left and are playing in this game? It's not many. I Man, just like last year, yeah. year before, this whole thing. Like nowadays, if you're not playing in a, a big important bowl game, which is not really many of those anymore, maybe New Year's Six in the playoff games. That's about it. Sure. Like now, if you're not playing in one of those games and you don't have eligibility past the season, eh, just opt out. So DJ Brown, Brown, uh, Bertrand, Baptiste, well, Kaiser is coming back. Uh, Baptiste, I mean, Ross and Mills coming back, which is huge. Yeah. So, yeah. and I think that's really it. So, shout out Offense. to those guys yeah. for for playing in the game. Yeah, Devin Ford. Now he can Devin come back. Ford I believe he has a year left. He has a COVID year. He can come back. Oh, can he? I don't know if he will. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, which man, but, that's going to be a topic for conversation down the road when these two freshmen come in here. There's going to be six running backs. So I just have a hard time seeing Devin Ford stand. If he, if you're I, for I, a one I, year, what are you, what are you going to do, man? He's already got a Penn State. He came from Penn State, right? Devin Ford, yeah. State, yeah. He's already got a Penn State degree. Once you know, I, I would have a hard time seeing him playing because I would guess Notre Dame would want to invest more in Kedron and Aeneas. I agree. But, but, you know, he can't come back. He had a role. He was a special teams demon this year. He was all over the place on special teams. Um, So that was, you know, but but you're right. There's not a lot of elder statesmen playing so, in this game. And kudos to the ones that are playing. And uh, especially Baptiste. Baptiste was just like, I saw his press conference a week ago on campus. And it's like, just another opportunity to play. He's like, everyone's got their own reasons. My reason is I want to play. I got. I just want to just put more film out there, and I just thought that I was awesome. Love it because he was a backup for five years. He was a role player at Ohio State, so he's he just wants more film, and I I, I like that. Very stunned, real quick. I'm very stunned. JD's playing because he has an All Star game invite. He's had some concussions and whatnot, so, so that one surprised me. But I am very excited. Obviously, he's playing. To me, those are the guys who truly love Notre Dame, man. Like, right, who am I to say? But for yeah, me. And this is just my opinion, like that that's giving it your all to the program. So like shout out JD Bertrand. Maybe, maybe those are, you know, that was a my previous statement was you know kind of lame. But let me let me rephrase it. If you're playing in this bowl game and you're someone like JD Bertrand, like shout out to you. Like you are a hundred percent giving it your all to the program. I can't say that about the quarterback well there's other it it just seems like you're right it's i mean it's trickling down like you said to start to show the all-star games these guys are just it's it's a way 
you know, but they're also, man, it, it's tough. You know, it's it's tough being in that situation. Like like Maris Leofau, to me, I understand. He he lost an entire season. He's got an unbelievable opportunity at the Shrine game. You know, the Senior Bowl, excuse me, the big one in Mobile, Alabama, where every head coach, every scout, every coordinator in America is there. And he's like, man, I just got to get held. I mean, he played the Ohio State game with a stinger. He should not have played, and he played in the game. He had a senior. He didn't even practice for all week long, and he Tim. played. So there's a few like that. Fisher yeah, America's all, been at Notre Dame since the, we, the, the the Charlie Weiss era. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense for him to go. Yeah, so. You know, the Hart, You know, it's funny. When you look back just real quick on you know on your, your comment with Hartman, the Hartman one, I'm yeah, as I said, I'm glad he's not playing. I'd rather see Angeli. And even if Minchie, I'd, I'd rather see that than Hartman. But Hartman not playing is is a little stupid because he's not. I mean, he's not. I mean, what? It, what? I mean, okay, if you get injury, great, you're going to be a free agent anyway. So, I mean, you know, and it's it's not like I don't know. It's, Where was this like two weeks ago when we debated this? You and Tyler were I like, hey, I your shut up. Now you're kind of with me. I'm not with you. I understand. I'm glad he's not. I, I am glad he's not playing. I am not, I am I'm glad, glad he's not playing he's too. Not playing. I'm glad he's yeah. not playing. I would yeah. rather watch Angeli. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Of course. I've wanted to watch Angeli more all season long. But my whole point was I kind of feel lied to. But we're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. We already did it. But, Tim, I'm, I'm glad you're kind of seeing the light on it. Because you weren't saying that last point before, looking at it from the Hartman lens and not the Notre Dame fan, the Notre Dame analyst lens. Look at it from like the oh, Hartman lens. Like, why yeah. aren't you playing it? But I was yeah. I was looking at it from the Notre Dame fan. Thank you. I know that's Thank why you were you. yeah, and that's why I told you I was like, yeah. you guys are looking at it like this. Like, I'm I'm kind of taking it as but that. I think the fan. I think the fans are okay with him not playing and with Maris not playing. All Estime. I mean, Estime may be a fourth round pick. I mean. Kyron Williams opted out and it's paying off for him. It got himself healthy and you know, he's going to be a pro bowler in his second year, which is unbelievable this year. So it, it, it's just a weird dynamic. And even the New York six, Mike, I mean, Florida state and Georgia has got 40 players between the two teams, 40 players not playing in this game, which just goes back to the NCA calendar. It's the whole calendar needs it, to get changed, dude. And they got to figure out a way to change it. So much needs to be changed in college football. I mean, I, I think to get these big players to play in the games, the bowl games got to pay, guys. Like if some of these big name guys, like I, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, next year, the year after, you, you, you start hearing reports about, oh, the Cotton Bowl has signed an NIL deal with so-and-so to play in the game, some big player, and they're going to market the heck out of him because yeah. he's going to be playing in that game. This is all stuff that's going to be coming down the pipeline, folks. It's it's very much a thing where the toothpaste has been out of the tube. There's no putting it back in. You just keep going. you know. Yeah. Um, so I I, I, I'm kind of – Sad about it because you know I, I'm a college football purist, but this is just kind of where we're at. Uh, Tim, let's hear from uh, Augie's locker room, which is your destination for unique, one of a kind Notre Dame items. Uh, you can really only find it at one place, and it is Augie's locker room, which has moved to a brand new location, 1733 North Ironwood Drive in South Bend. It's just right down the street from the University of Notre Dame. Uh, so whenever you're in town or or if you are a local, just head over to Augie's Locker Room. They have a wide selection of Notre Dame Stadium pieces, jerseys, helmets, autographs, and one-of-a-kind rock knee items. You can find exclusive Joe Montana signed items and famous sculptor Jerry McKenna's replicas of the bronze statues around the stadium. And Augie gets new stuff in all the time. If he doesn't have it in store, he's going to go find it for you, just like he found Mike Goolsby's old jersey um, from uh, a couple decades ago. Uh, and he did that in uh, just a few minutes. Uh, Augie's the guy. If you if you need the guy to go find you some Notre Dame memorabilia, give Augie a call, 574-277-6363. Check out his website, augieslockerroom.com. Folks, if you're just joining us, please hit the thumbs up on the video. Subscribe to our channel for more content. If you are new, Tim, you want to add some? Yeah, I just want to say uh, Andrew Dillon was just chatting about Bettis. And it uh, played in the bowl game. Yeah, obviously, that was 30 years ago. But last year, for crying out loud, uh, you had the Heisman Trophy winner playing. The number one pick in the in the NFL draft played in his game, you know. 
you know, young, the quarterback at Alabama played. Will Anderson, who went, what, number three or four to the Houston Texans played. So, you had Alabama's top two, you know, top five picks played in the game. So, yeah, it is uh, – it's an interesting thing, but it also shows the number one pick in the NFL draft played in his bowl game. So, Steve Angeli getting his first start in a Notre Dame uniform, um, kind of – getting it by default, as Tim Hyde might say. Kind of the last man standing here uh, with all the people. So many quarterbacks have transferred out. I would really wish we had the late, great Lou Smoji right now to tell us all about the math and the history of Notre Dame quarterbacks transferring out because it has been a lot here in, in the past couple of years. But um, the handsome man, Steve Angeli, uh, from Westfield, New Jersey, Bergen Catholic High School. Uh, getting, yeah, getting again, getting his first start. Just a little bit over 6'2", nearly 6'2 and a half, 211 pounds. Does it look good in mop-up duty, Tim? I'm going to recuse myself from uh, giving my thoughts on what I believe he, he, how he's going to play because I just don't know, Tim, and I am just so rooting for this kid hardcore that uh, I, I, I really can't give any thorough or uh, you know unbiased analysis. So uh, what are you expecting to see from Angeli in this game? I'm, uh, man, I'm I'm with you. Man. I hope I hope he hoist in the the Sun Bowl, you know, MVP. I mean, seriously, I hope he is. I hope he goes out there and and kicks butt uh, in, in this game. Um, it's the two offensive tackles are the key. Those two guys are the key. So that's the key to this entire football game. Uh, even 2024, for crying out loud, uh, said it last week. Man, pe- people aren't going to realize how good Notre Dame's had it with with Alton Fisher the last two years. So it's going to be a huge uh, downgrade next year, but no, I'm, I'm excited. I I'm excited for him because he does, there are things he does good. I think maybe because it's a one game, you know, I don't want to say trial, but it's a one game thing for him to prepare, get ready for next year. But his quarterback coach, the guy that's been with him all season is calling all the plays. So, you know, he's been in those rooms, you know, especially now there's no, you know, the bull prep the last two weeks haven't had no classes and all that. And they're just hunkering down doing football. So I'm sure every play scripted, everything's ready to roll. There's not going to be nothing that Gino calls that and jelly hasn't repped and is not comfortable with and ready to roll. And that's, I think that's a big positive for both Gino uh, Gadouli and Steve and jelly in this game. So I hope, I hope great house gets a dozen catches and I hope, Love and Price look like uh, SEC freak is always playing, playing running back, running that ball. Because Oregon State, they have a couple opt-outs, but what scares me is their D-line has none. So the D-line is still playing, and they were the top ten in the country in sacks. So um, Notre Dame's going to have to neutralize that front to give Angeli time to throw and have some fun. Yeah, at the top of the hour, Tim and I are going to record our uh, our preview video for the sun bowl that you know we'll post on th- tomorrow yeah tomorrow so the game's on friday Jeez, yeah. so we'll, we'll, we'll dive into some more kind of preview talk then uh that is interesting and jelly and uh good duly kind of interim quarterback interim offensive coordinator talking about the tackles not like he's got scrubs there. It is Tosh Baker who started a game two years ago, like you mentioned, Tim, yeah. and uh, just a five star in Charles Jagasaw. And even if it's Wagner, there's another five star. <laughs> well, again, it's not scrubs. No. I one more thought on this. I really do feel like the offense. Like, what are the strengths? Right, quarterback remains to be seen. Not really receiver. It. It wasn't when they had all of their guys. It's not going to no. be when they don't have most of them. Tight end, you know, it's a it's a plus. But really, it's the interior offensive line and the running backs. That's like the known yep. strength. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's run, 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 play action. We're going to have a different play caller. So whether or not Gadouli and, and Jelly have futures at Notre Dame in off, as offensive coordinator and quarterback, respectively, this is a really good opportunity for both of them to like a resume builder, you know, whether it's for a different school um, or, you know, for Notre Dame down the line, you know, if, uh, if Denbrock's a one-year thing at Notre Dame and, you know, he wants to retire or something and he, I, 
and Gattuli did a really good job filling in. We were like how he did the Sun Bowl. And, you know, maybe they give Angeli a, a, a real shot after Leonard goes. You know, we'll see. But, uh, yeah, Tim, I'm, I'm excited to see this offense. I do think it will be run, run, play action. Like, I, I think that might be kind of where no, – I think they're going to go run heavy in this game. But we'll see. Yeah, and then hit phase on on a on a post play action post, you know. Obviously, I mean, I mean, everyone loves you know KK Smith, but he got signed, stole him away from Texas Tech. He's got amazing speed, and then Great House, man, you got to you know the, the key was to, people. Are, I mean, we have to go back. It's like Thomas and Great House were the one and two in catches, you know, going into the Ohio State game, and then they were just injured and beating up the rest of the year. So those two guys are big, big components that uh, that Sam Hartman lost for the majority of the season, and now they're healthy, and, and Jelly's got to utilize those two guys. Got the speed, obviously, with Smith and Faison, and then use Great House. I mean, Great House would have been a freshman All-American this year had he not had the the, the injuries that, that kept him down. He would have had – I bet you he would have gotten up to high 30s, 40 catches this year and had a heck of a season because he was balling that first month of the year. So excited to see him, but you're right. Jadarian Price, Jeremiah Love got different gears to him. Eskimo is a heck of a football player. He was a better player in 23 than 22. I didn't think he had great vision. This year he did. You saw a lot of great cutbacks with him this year. It's really his second year in the scheme and running those balls. But, um, man, those two other guys, Mike. I mean, I mean, they I and mean, they they could go the distance every single time they touch it. So it's going to be exciting to see them and um, let's go have some fun on Friday and, and see what Steve Angeli does. I'm hoping, my, my fingers crossed, he's the MVP and that would be awesome. That'd be awesome Tim, for you, him. And then the future going into next season, it'd just be awesome. Are you a fan of the uh, musical Hamilton? Yeah, it's a good one. Love it. I read the I've book. got it. I read the book. Who likes sitting around and reading 750 pages? But it was a great book. You read the book? Oh, yeah, I've read that. I'm a, I'm a reader, Mike. There's a few things I do good in this world. One of them, I enjoy reading. So my wife got me that 750-page Hamilton book <laughs> uh, because I, I, you know, when that, when the the film hit Disney Plus in, in 20, summer 2020, I, you know, memorized half of it. And then she was like, oh, your birthday in August, we're going to get you this 750-page book. And I read about the first 25 pages, which is most books and themselves because those that is a big book. With big pages and small font, right about 25 pages, and I stop. But I don't know, Tim, if you're in, in the Chicago area, uh, you can head to gametime.co and you can get some last minute Hamilton tickets for a show in on Thursday. So, and, and you know what's even better than that, Tim? If you use the promo code BGI, you're going to get $20 off your first purchase. Um, so, yeah, we're going to talk about this ticket purchasing process, folks, because it can be stressful. You find the event you want to go to, you know, maybe, maybe it is Hamilton. Uh, you get the seats you want to go through that whole ticket purchasing process. It can be stressful, but not with game time, especially if you're finding tickets at the last minute. So head to gametime.co, not .com, it's gametime.co, a fast and easy way to buy tickets for sports, music, comedy, and theater near you with killer last minute ticket deals so you can get relaxed and hyped for that fun that you are going to have. Use the promo code BGI, you'll get $20 off your first purchase. Again, BGI for $20 off your first purchase. They'll guarantee that you're going to get the lowest price or they will refund you 110%. 110%. You don't need to plan in months in advance since they have deals right up to game time. Snag the tickets without the stress with game time. Terms apply. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Okay, Tim. We were texting about this. I think me, you, and Goolsby, the Echoes Awards yeah. show. This was this was yeah. eleven days ago now that this was put out by Notre Dame. The, the banquet used to be more of a, I feel like a, a public, not, not public, but it used to be publicized a little bit more. I feel like now it's just. Yeah. I think media used to be able to go to it. Oh, it was see, more of a recruiting. This was, yeah, this was. I mean, all the old timers in there with me know. I mean, this used to be obviously early signing day changed it, but this was the thing. This was the recruiting weekend. They would bring in their top 20 guys, wine and dine them. All the alums would come back. Yeah, this was a huge, huge event for decades. I mean, this yeah. was the Lou Holtz, you know, recruiting pitch back, you know, when he built all his uh, program yeah. up. So 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's not. Show. I mean, Will Black, the uh, 2025 four star offensive tackle, he was there committed to Notre Dame right after it. So, but here is the list of uh, winners. Talk about these. We'll start at the bottom. Devin Houston, defensive scout team player of the year. Preston Zinter, um, defensive scout team player of the year. I guess they have two of those. And then over on offensive scout team player, they're Leo Scheidler and Chase Ketterer. And then we get into some of the bigger ones. And, and Tim, I'll add, I don't know which one specifically, but some are co- picked by coaches. Some are picked by players, and there's might be a mix. But the last award that I'm going to mention was picked by the coaches from what I was told. Javante Jean-Baptiste, Spirit of the Game Award. Love that. Riley Mills, the uh, Iron Cross Award. Uh, I feel like that could have gone up to Howard Cross. It would have been perfect, but I digress. Speaking of Howard Cross, Defensive Lineman of the Year, well-deserved. Joe Alt, Offensive Lineman of the Year, and the best damn offensive lineman in the country, if you ask me. Ben Morrison, the Student Athlete Engagement Award. Jack Kaiser, Special Teams Player of the Year. And here until we get to the biggies. Xavier Watts, Defensive Player of the Year. Audric Estime, Offensive Player of the Year. J.D. Bertrand, the Father Ted Man of the Year. And Sam Hartman, the Most Valuable Player. Now, Tim, what was your reaction to uh, these reward uh, awards that uh, Notre Dame tweeted about? I'll be, I mean, I told you um, at first I, I thought nothing of it. And then all of a sudden, yeah, we were chatting. I think it was after our show last week. And I went back and I saw it. It's like, holy moly, they really did give Sam Hartman the MVP. I thought nothing of it at first. Probably just glanced over it. And then I went and ran. I was like, they really gave him the MVP. And then like you're saying, if it's, is that the, you know, the hot rumor, like the coaches picked this fascinating. Nothing against Sam and whatnot. Was he the team MVP? If, if, if you're looking at it as who the hell else is playing quarterback, sure. He's, he's the only quarterback if that's how they wanted to do it. You know, I, you know, did, uh, did Freeman walk into the room and says, all right, guys, this is the MVP of the year. Um, this is what we're doing. I have no idea. I mean, I'm biased. I would I know it's funny. I texted you today. I was at the auto shop real quick, doing uh, dropping the car off for the wife for a quick uh, inspection, and I was there for an hour. And I had the latest blue and gold in my hand, and reading it, and blue and gold, and Porca and the crew pick, you know, Xavier Watts. I would have picked all the best player on the team. He's unbelievable. His best game the last two seasons happened to be his last, which is Stanford. Uh, he so he went out on the highest of high notes with well over ninety uh, grade. Uh, from pro football focus, all, all to mine. He's just a man child the last two years. Um, estimate, estimate, the, you know, which is funny because you start going down the thing. So if Hartman, if Hartman's not the team MVP, Mike, in my estimation, what, what's he getting the spirit award? Cause he gave out the beats and some under armor shoes and socks. I don't know. M- M- MVP to me is definitely alt. I wrote offensive MVP estimate. And uh, my DMV, I mean, Watts, it's funny. You start looking over Watts. His best games were in the biggest games. And I think those were just show. I mean, I was going over his stats. He was unbelievable. What about Hartman? Yeah, I, I, you know, not the MVP. No, I mean, that, you know, and I, I, I get maybe why they did it, but I'm not a, I would not have had him be the, the team MVP. Uh, it's funny, yeah. real quick on Watts, I made a little note. It's, you know. He probably has the big, you know, outside of Hartman's scramble against Duke, maybe the second hidden play of the year is the Watts TFL against Duke, the last play of the game that forced them to punt and made Notre Dame go 95 yards. So that was a that was a big one, one of those hidden things in there. But the lineman of the year, as I get all that, the Moose Krause Award used to be the line. I mean, back in the day, they only did like five awards. It's like, boom, these are our big five. And they only gave out these. And then Kelly. When Kelly started doing 12 captains, and now you got 22 awards, it's like a damn high school award show is what it's turned into. <laughs> Everyone gets an award. I mean, you got four practice team players of the year, so it's like, come on, pick one yeah. for crying just, out loud. Just to kind of reiterate my point on this, because I'm sure people are just dying to know, it's I had no issues with Sam Hartman. It's just Good this award. has been my point about the the 
the praise that I just have not understood. Like MVP. Do you know who got team MVP last year, Tim? Let me let me see if I can get the crack staff to look that up because based on this, I feel like Pine should have oh, got MVP I, last year. I mean, yeah, I mean Mayor was it last year, so um there you go. Yeah, yeah Michael Mayor. But um yeah, I mean nothing against how it's funny because I've actually gone back because that's what Tim I does is go back and start charting and looking at things. I I want to say I took like seven, I did the Mike Stingers, looked at seven data points for quarterbacks, yards attempt, touchdowns, yards, all these things, all these metrics, and used the key QBR rating, which goes all the way back to Brady Quinn. Um, and then before that, I just used pass efficiency. But I, I went all the way back to Rick Meyer. I went from 1990 to 2023. Hartman lands number 13 in the top quarterback seasons between 90 and 2023. So that's a big, big, you know, season out there, big, you know, many years. So he ended up being number 13 for the best individual season. Brady Quinn's 05 is number one by a mile. Clausen's 09 is two. And Quinn's 06 was number three um, as far as the highest ranked seasons. Uh, you know, that are out there. And then Notre Dame only had a couple of years where they didn't even have quarterbacks that qualified. So, hmm. so Hartman's middle of the, you know, he's in the upper echelon, which is funny. That's going back to Notre Dame nation starving for a Brady Quinn, a Claus and an elite quarterback that could just put a team on him and go do good things. They're starving. So for Hartman to be in the upper echelon of one single season tells you that Notre Dame still has to, has to get that quarterback yeah. issue fix so to speak so yeah just, you were just right mayor was the um mvp and i think and offensive player of the year bertrand got defensive big. player of the year patterson got uh, offensive lineman of the year isaiah foskey defensive lineman of the year um so there you go well, I, mean, I mean people could agree with that i but but you know mike i mean if you took a poll of a thousand notre dame fans they're the, the majority would be like, really? Sam Hartman? Right. I mean, right. I, just, I, 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 just, single digits. I bet you it's single digits would say, yeah, that's a good pick. I, I just don't think he is deserving of that level of praise, which is what I've been, you know, kind of harping on really ever since the pit game. No, no, senior game, senior, senior game. Um, I was like, I, yeah, I just senior, didn't, senior game. I didn't really get that ever since then. I'm kind of like, I just don't really understand why uh, he's getting. Kind of this, all the praise and adoration as if he took this team to the playoff and it's a, maybe a 10-win team, but he's not even playing the bowl game. Anyways. I hear you. No, I hear you. Anyway, Tim. It's like going to end on something fun. Well, I mean, hey, I'll, I'll end some. I mean, I mean, we really didn't get into this a week ago. Let's end po a massive positive. Congrats to, you know, Watson Alt, unanimous All-Americans which is an unbelievable honor. Uh, you don't give consensus and all that to the second team, but you got Cross and Estime were consensus second teamers yeah. on nearly every single second team. So, I mean, we got into this a little bit. I, I don't know if the final one had come out yet, but um, so you got four guys getting recognized, but all and Xavier Watts are going to be on there at the big unanimous uh, wall they have there in the stadium. Uh, I don't know if it's stadium or in the, the monogram room for, for life. So it's pretty awesome. All right. Well, we are going to sign it off there. Tim and I are going to record our uh, video that we'll post tomorrow around noon Eastern time. Uh, uh, Tim will give us three keys to the sun bowl uh, and offer a score prediction for the contest as only Tim Hyde can. So make sure you tune in for that. It will be a, a pre-recorded video that will go live on our YouTube channel about 12 p.m. Eastern time. So check that out again, folks. Go to blueandgold.com for more Notre Dame football coverage. If you're just an Irish football junkie and you just want more info, go over to the website and check that out. Tim and I will be live right after the game on this YouTube channel uh, to break things down and give our thoughts on the contest. So uh, you can join us on Friday as well. And, of course, hit the thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to our channel if you are new here. That is going to do it. I'm Mike Singer. He's Tim Hyde. Take care, everyone. Have a great night, and we will catch you guys next time.